Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're gonna be discussing two techniques used in heap exploitation. And these are feng shui and heap spraying. So these are actually two different techniques which sometimes get confused by people. And uh, people assume that they're actually the same technique, but they do have their differences. Um, essentially in this video, we're gonna be talking about what these techniques are. And I'm gonna be giving you an example of how you can actually carry out these techniques on the iOS kernel. So we're gonna be using my, uh, my iPhone 5C here. Uh, as a demo device to show you guys a kind of proof of concept uh, using one technique of doing uh, an iOS kernel heap spray. So hopefully you'll find this useful if you are interested in iOS security. And this actually also closely relates to, uh, closely ties in with the series I started over a year ago on this channel, but have not yet managed to finish. And that is the how to develop your own jailbreak series, which some of you may remember me starting here. Uh, so this only did have two video parts that I had uh, that I'd uploaded at this point. But uh, yeah, this series will continue in 2019. Uh, I won't talk about now why I've not actually released any more uh, videos in this series up until this point, but this video will actually tie in with, uh, with this series and we'll actually be using the technique I'm gonna show in this video in the jailbreak that we end up developing using the Pegasus bugs. Uh, so if you haven't already checked out the first two parts of that series, then go ahead, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but anyway, so now let's go ahead and talk about these two uh, heap exploitation techniques. So first of all, uh, if you haven't read my book, my second book, Beginner's Guide to Exploitation on Volume 2, uh, the chapter in here actually does cover feng shui um, and it has some like diagrams in here. So chapter six right here uh, actually covers uh, heap feng shui and it covers uh, one of the exploit exercises on my GitHub. Uh, it also uses some diagrams to explain how this works and it basically walks through one of the programs that's available on my GitHub, uh, I believe heap level three maybe. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna play around with more of an artificial environment. Um, if you've already done that or if you don't wanna do that, then just watch the rest of this video and you can play around directly on the iOS kernel heap itself. So what are heap feng shui and heap spraying? So first of all, we're gonna start with heap spraying. So both of these techniques are essentially ways of manipulating the, the heap memory layout in a target process uh, during an exploit to uh, come to an, a kind of arrangement where you have control over what's going on and how things are laid out. So, so a heap spray is essentially where you just spray areas of the heap with controlled data uh, that you as the attacker control to uh, attempt to populate the heap with as much of your controlled memory as possible. And this is normally used so that you can um, you increase the likelihood of being able to find your controlled data. So for example, you can kind of think, think of this in a similar way as how we would use to do uh, a NOP sled in a, a shellcode payload on the stack, where you don't exactly know whereabouts your, your shellcode starts. So you kind of have a load of NOPs before it. So anywhere land, if you land anywhere inside these NOPs, you're gonna to get to the shellcode. So you don't have to land in the exact, exact position. Now it's kind of a similar idea uh, to that. You essentially wanna raise the chances of you finding your controlled data in the kernel. So a heap spray, uh, oh sorry, in the heap, not the kernel. So a heap spray would basically work by just making several allocations using controlled data. So you just need to find a way to make an allocation essentially on the heap, uh, and this will vary from target to target. So in a minute, we're gonna discuss a way of doing this in the iOS kernel heap. And obviously we need to be able to do this in the point of an iOS uh, kernel exploit. We need to be able to do this from user land. So obviously if we were in the kernel and actually running through the kernel, we could actually just call an allocate method like malloc or calloc, whatever it is in the kernel. Uh, but we need, as an exploit developer, we need to be able to allocate memory in the kernel, but from our user land, uh, from the user land perspective. So that's what we're gonna discuss in a minute. Uh, feng Shui on the other hand, this kind of starts out similar uh, in the way you carry out this technique, in the way that you spray the heap with lots of controlled data. But with Feng Shui, the idea is not just to raise the chance of you being able to find your data, it is to be able to then make a deterministic allocation at a known location after you've done your spray. So essentially what you do is you spray the heap with a whole bunch of controlled data, and then you free some of those allocations, only a few of them. And what this essentially does is it pokes holes in the heap, in the memory that you've, uh, you've all allocated. So you initially allocate a load of data, which then results in lots of data being consecutively allocated that you control. Then you free, you punch some holes into this, into this memory, and then whatever you allocate next is gonna fall, or likely is gonna fall into one of these holes, which means that it is directly surrounded by your controlled data. And this could be useful in different scenarios, which we won't cover now, but we'll talk about that later on. So 
So as I said, the way of getting a heap allocation uh, is gonna be different depending on what target you're working with. Now, if you're working with the example program that I actually uh, mentioned and that's covered in the book, in this, in this challenge, essentially, the way you allocate memory on the heap is there's just an option in a menu, in a, in a REPL, and you just select the option, it allocates with some data. Uh, in a real world scenario, it's not as straightforward as that. You're not gonna have uh, an easy way necessarily to allocate data on the heap. So with uh, regards to the iOS kernel, let's say we're building a jailbreak app uh, and we want a way to allocate memory that we control into the kernel memory uh, from userland. The way we can do this, there are multiple ways, but the way I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video is using muck message sprain. So this is a technique that I've come across uh, on a few different sites, and I've also spoke to uh, Teamstar and Seguza about this uh, when I met them in Leipzig at 35C3 last December. And this is actually a technique that is uh, has been used to to achieve a kernel heap spray, and you can also use it for feng shui. So this is a general technique, but we will actually use this specific technique uh, in, in developing that jailbreak with using the Pegasus bugs. But in this video, we're just gonna focus on the technique as a whole. So first of all, what is a muck message? So muck messages are essentially messages passed between task ports uh, through processes. So this is used for inter-process communication um, on iOS and on macOS. And if you actually search up uh, muck message, we can find the function here. This is the muck message function and calling this with specified port set up and a message actually set up, you can send and receive uh, messages containing arbitrary data to uh, different ports. So essentially it would work, you need to have uh, access, you need to have a send write to the port you wanna send a message to. So this could be for another app or it could be different ports inside your own apps. It could be the exception ports, if you're dealing with catching exceptions and stuff like that. Uh, essentially, you just need the right, the correct rights. And uh, if you've looked at my other videos where we look at getting the kernel task port, that is also a muck port, and uh, we essentially interact with the kernel and control it through sending these messages, essentially. So the way it would work um, is you would have one process with an access to the port of another process. This process then sends some message in, in some kind of message structure. It goes, uh, it goes, gets sent into the kernel, and then the kernel will redirect that to the port when this application tries to receive it. And then that, that's how you can kind of transfer data between applications and between ports. Now, how do we actually use that as a way of spraying the kernel heap and getting controlled data into the kernel? Well, it's actually pretty clever because uh, if you think about it, when we have these two processes in userland and we send a message from one to the other, it goes through the kernel because the kernel is obviously what's managing these processes. So when the first process sends a muck message, the kernel actually allocates some memory on the kernel heap. This muck message is copied in containing any data that the muck message had from the userland. So we could populate this with arbitrary data. This gets written to some area on the kernel heap. And then when the other process um, tries to receive it, it will basically come out of the kernel heap and the other process will, will be, have access to it. But what we can do is essentially just send lots and lots of MAC messages. They will all get populated into different, different areas in the kernel heap. And if we never receive them, so essentially if we control both ends of the ports uh, and never receive any of these messages, they essentially stay in the kernel. So by sending, let's say, a thousand MAC messages containing some, some data like 414141 bytes, uh, we would have a thousand allocations with these bytes in random places in the kernel heap. So that is how we can actually get some kind of control over what's on the kernel heap. So how could you actually turn this heap spray uh, into a feng shui technique? Well, you can do the same thing while sending, sending lots and lots of muck messages into the kernel and then never receiving them. But then if you then choose to receive a few of them at random positions in this in these list of ports, then essentially what that's gonna do is free up these, uh, these memory areas in the heap, poking holes. So you can use these muck messages as uh, a, a heap spraying technique and also for feng shui. So, that is, uh, that is one way of doing this with the iOS kernel. There are other ways that have been used in different jailbreaks. So now I'm gonna actually show you some code uh, that actually, basically how this works. So first of all, just sending a basic muck message uh, works as follows. So we have this structure here, which is a message structure. We have a message header and a body, and then we have some inline data here. Now this can be anything you want. So in this case, it's just a 32-bit integer, which is enough for us to basically put like four, four, one bytes. Uh, so if, if we wanna, have those shown up in the kernel heap. So we can just have an integer. Now what we need to do is basically create an instance of this structure and then assign all of the correct fields. We need to set up all the ports. And in this case, as I said, we're using, we're sending to a port that we own as well so that we can choose not to receive the message. Um, you, you assign those ports. Uh, and then the actual inline data, you can set this to whichever data you want. So in this case, I'm using 4545445. 
And then what we do is we pass in that structure uh, as an argument to the muck message function. So muck message is actually used for sending and receiving. Uh, there's not like a, a muck message send and a muck message receive. That it's both in the same function. You just specify uh, using here uh, this this constant muck me muck send message as opposed to muck receive message. And um, we're passing in the the structure and sending it to that port that we've specified in the structure. And then uh, if that succeeds, the message has been queued and essentially means it's been uh, put into the kernel memory until we choose to receive it, which we never do. So this is just sending a single muck message, but obviously this is in a function which you could call like a thousand times if you wanted to do a proper spray. Um, in this actual application here, uh, this is working with the Pegasus bugs. This is actually what we're gonna be using in, uh, in the later parts of that video series. And in this case, I actually take it a step further and we actually use this uh, spraying technique to get a muck message, to get some custom data, at a known kernel address. So uh, and as in we actually know exactly what address in the kernel that memory lies at. And this is especially useful for, in the case of exploiting the Pegasus bugs, because we need to actually have a known address to set up our fake V table. Now, this part, this has not been explained yet in the video series, I don't believe, um, but if you have looked into the Pegasus bugs before, then you'll know that uh, the use after free is uh, with a C++ object. So we essentially get to reallocate a C++ object um, and the way we're going to exploit that is by changing the vtable pointer to point to some fake vtable, which we then set up with controlled values. But because it's kind of this double dereference, it's not enough for us to just put a custom pointer um, into the vtable address because we need that to point validly to somewhere else in the kernel memory holding a list of controlled pointers. So this is how this is useful essentially. We need to get some known data at a known address. So we can use this, uh, this controlled. Uh, data here, this will be the first function in the vtable essentially. Um, and I'm gonna quickly show you guys actually how this works. So right here what we're gonna do is I'm SSH'd into this iPhone and uh, this is actually already jailbroken. So we are developing a jailbreak for an already jailbroken phone. So essentially we can debug this a little easier because we already have access to the kernel task port. So in this program I'm about to show you, uh, we're using the kernel task port to actually inspect the kernel memory to make sure we've carried this out correctly. Um, but essentially you'll see, you'll see what happens based on what I've just explained. So the program uh, we're gonna run is called Pegasus. And uh, this is just essentially the Pegasus bug up until the point of the last video that we covered, so leaking the ASLR slide. Um, we're still not exploiting the use of the free yet in this, but we're setting up the kernel memory so we have controlled data at a known kernel address. So we're gonna run this, and you can see that this is actually not gonna be 100% all of the time. You can see this time it did work. We can see our 414, uh, sorry, 4545 bytes. Um, it's not always gonna work, but let me just quickly explain what actually happened here. So if we scroll up to the top, you can see uh, a log of what happened. So we open the connection to the Apple Key Store user client with that malicious dictionary, which we pass in the info leak dictionary. Um, yeah, we leak that data. And then one of the addresses um, in the in the leaked addresses, so we leak, we leak a several, we leak a series of different pointers from the kernel stack during the info leak stage. Now, one of these pointers, as we discussed in the previous video, is how you actually calculate the ASLR slide. It's actually the pointer to a return address in the function we're currently in, something like that. So that's the pointer we use to calculate the slide. One of the other pointers slightly further down is actually a kernel heap pointer. And that is the one we're actually exploring here. So you can see this pointer here, it says exploring memory at BD uh, D84000. And this is a kernel heap pointer. Now, as I said, we're using the task port to actually VM read this, this memory essentially. So you wouldn't be able to do this if you were creating this on a non jailbroken device, but for our debugging purposes, this is pretty useful. And you can see we are looking at this memory here. Now, if we go down further past, uh, past this top chunk here, we can see our 4545 bytes start to appear. Now, why is that? Well, if we actually take a step back, what essentially happened was the reason this pointer was leaked as part of the, the kernel, the stack pointers, is because this pointer was actually used earlier during our serialization of the first dictionary, I believe, or in one of the functions that was involved around that stage. This was actually uh, an old address of a muck message that was used and was actually sent during that time. So by the point we're seeing this, that muck message has been freed. We still have the pointer to it leaked in the kernel stack, but the memory's actually been freed again. And essentially all we're doing in the code is after we're running the info leak, we're actually sending a muck message straight away, hoping that it will repopulate that memory area on the heap where the previous muck message was. And you can see it did work because yeah, so it's, it's not it's not exactly um, where this is. It's kind of relative to the address. So a certain offset, you can start to see these the muck message appear. 
with the bytes. Um, but yeah, we, we managed to essentially reallocate that old heap memory with our own muck message uh, containing, in this case, the 4545 bytes. Now, there are other bytes also, and you can see this is actually duplicated. Now, one thing I'm not too sure about, uh, maybe let me know if you guys know any, if you've got any experience with this. I'm not sure why this is duplicated. You may have thought I've sent several different muck messages. I've actually only sent one muck message to reallocate this memory, so I'm not sure why it's shown so many times here. I'm not sure why it's been like copied uh, several different times down here. But yeah, that seems to be the case. But the point is we have controlled data that we wrote from our userland program and it's now land into a controlled memory address that we know in the kernel's virtual memory. So this would be enough to actually exploit the Pegasus bug. And I have actually done that uh, with a separate program, which I'll show you in a minute, or a version of this program, where we then actually use this as a vtable, jump to that uh, pointer, jump to the vtable pointer, and then jump to the first function, in this case, pointing to 454545 and the kernel panics with the PC set to that value. All right, so this is a different version of the Pegasus program. This does include the use of the free exploitation, as I just said. So we're gonna run that, and I'm gonna show you on the screen. We run it, and the phone uh, is panicked. So we're just gonna wait for this to reboot, and I'll show you guys the panic log. And you can see again, we did actually hit, uh, we got the right allocation there, we, we were quick enough. Um, sometimes you will not be quick enough. If you have too much code between the info leak and between your sending of the muck message, then you're gonna likely miss the opportunity to reallocate that memory, and it's gonna be reallocated by something else naturally in the kernel. So you wanna make sure you're as quick as you can in there. All right, so here's the panic log, and what you can see right there, hopefully this is focused, is that we have uh, PC control there, 454545. So yeah, but uh, as I said, exploitation of this bug will be covered in the future parts of that how to make your own Jabrick video. Let me know if you guys are still interested in that video because I do apologize, as I said, it's been over a year since I continued the series, mostly because of how much uh, time it actually takes to explain the bug, the second bug, it's very complicated in the way it occurs, and it just takes a lot of time to put that into a video, lots of editing time, stuff like that. But Anyway, so I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions about this, then let me know. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.